All right, from that live interview from Butere by O'Brien Kimani, we now get into our next segment of the day right here on Good Morning Kenya. In case you're just joining in, my name is Vivian Degwa, and today we'll be talking about nurturing talents. And with me are two very beautiful ladies. I will start with uh, the one on my immediate right, and that is Ande Monet, and she is the founder, Ande Monet LLC. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm so excited. All right, and on my far right is Isabel Donadio, and Isabel is the founder top talent agency, and she is also an author of numerous books. Welcome to the show. Asante sana. It's a pleasure to have you here. So, if you can just mention to us why you're here, to, why you're you, you're here today. So my company, Top Talent Agency, is doing the Kenya keynote tour where we are starting in Nairobi, going to Kisi, Kisumu, and ending in the Masai Mara, mm -hmm. where we're speaking to universities, students, sharing with them the different insights and expertise of successful business owners from America mm -hmm. to help them advance in whatever it is that they want to become, what kind of jobs that they even want to create and uh, even doing service projects. We've done things like putting in water tanks, infiltration systems, painting black walls, um, and doing um, sponsorships for individual students with their school fees. Mm -hmm. How long are you going to be around uh, maybe Andy? We'll all be here for the entire week. Mm -hmm. you know, do, mm -hmm. pr talking to a lot of schools every single day for this whole, this whole week coming. Mm -hmm. When we're talking about nurturing talents, maybe yeah. what are the most um, effective strategies that you'd say you've seen work when it comes to nurturing talents? When it comes to nurturing talents, uh, the base understanding is what is it that the student is trying to achieve? What, uh, what are their goals after college? And sometimes we don't even get to really have that full conversation. But even, you know, we'll do like group pollings. We'll ask the group, you know, what, do you want to go into this? Do you want to go into that? Okay, well, what are skill sets you're already doing now? Are you in sports? Are you in clubs? Are you already having um, inept conversations that are meant to impact the school mm -hmm. that can be transitioned into the jobs that you want to go into? So those are some of the things that we kind of point out that talents that they already have, they just need to be worked on. Mm -hmm. Who do you mainly work with? I work with a lot of different industries, um, different sized businesses. I have a nonprofit also called Youth Success Organization, all for the purpose of really expanding children's possibilities mm -hmm. because they don't know what they don't know at that time. And if there's some at home or cultural things that prevent them from being the best version of themselves for succeeding in life, I bring those opportunities to them in their households as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I get that. Now, how do you identify individuals with a potential to grow? Honestly, it's the, the ones that are the most outspoken. Um, sometimes we'll even do exercises where we'll ask the audience, you know, who wants to volunteer to do something? And sometimes it's the action takers. A lot of times when it comes to having a goal in life, it's often a dream. You wish really hard to, to make it come to fruition. Mm -hmm. But really what we, what we love to see are action takers, people who don't even know what they're volunteering for. They, they don't know what the outcome is going to be. Um, but we make it fun for everyone involved. But it's the people who take action that we reward so they can see that when they go for it, when they, when they don't hold back, whether it's the voices in their head, it's someone that's in their corner that's not really encouraging them to the fullest, um, when they defeat all that and take action, that's what we really love to see. Mm -hmm. And still maybe um, to you, Isabel, what goes into nurturing talents? What exactly goes into nurturing talents and what do you love most about doing what you do? Honestly, I love to see that deep connection that some of the students will have with the speakers. Um, all of them have different businesses, they focus on different industries, and mm -hmm. so when a student is able to really connect with someone and they can see the kind of potential that can come out of it, uh, that, is, that is a relationship that I really love to see you know, continue on even after the tour because even though we're here for a week um, and our, our tour ends on, a, on 7 October, it, the, the work doesn't end for us. We stay in touch, we follow up, we make sure that you know, the ones that we've committed to sponsorships, um, that their school fees are taken care of so that way they can continue on their education because what we want to see are more youth individuals that are impacting the world. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, mentorship is such a huge thing and it's big on every aspect, you know, in whichever way we want to look at it. So maybe what exactly is the main role of mentorship when it comes to the nurturing of um, an individual? For me, the biggest thing is 
meeting them where they are, not forcing them to be something they're not, and knowing where they can excel. And sometimes it's really, they, they don't believe in themselves, but they have to, be, if they believe in somebody who believes in them, that's mm -hmm. all that they need. That's mm -hmm. like the first step in a, with a lot of children, especially. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe your take on, on the same, the role of mentorship. The role of mentorship is teaching the youth what you failed at and how they can avoid those pitfalls. It's like, yes, I've done all these things. I've written many books. I get to travel internationally. Um, but I've had people who have been mad at me. I've been people who didn't want to work with me anymore. I have had situations where, you know, I put a lot of time and effort into a project and it mm -hmm. just didn't work out. And because I was able to identify those things, I can share that with my mentee. I can share that with someone who, you know, wants to kind of follow in my footsteps so they can avoid those things and they can have a stronger trajectory to success. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What does it take for one to be a mentor? You know, um, doing what you do, you're a mentor to most of these children. When they look at you, they see a mentor in you. So what does it take to, to be a mentor? It sounds really silly, but for me, it's just being there for them it's not about me anymore mm. right it's about what i can give and how i can provide and and the possibilities i can provide and the opportunities i can provide and the vision and the mindset that that you give to children that they know that they have something more and if i can do that that's half the battle mm -hmm. and the details sort of fall into place after that what they want to do how they want to do it everything for me has always been how can i make the biggest difference that i can i mean ever since i could remember mm -hmm. and that comes in even as simple as giving somebody a genuine smile in the street is the way that i can give give some love and support to people mm -hmm. but when we really are able to mentor children to be able to realize that there's so much more that they can do in their life knowing that it's possible mm -hmm. What's the importance of that nurturing of talents and specifically from the young age because you're working with young um, young individuals, you know, people who are in school still. Mm -hmm. So what's the importance of nurturing it from the get-go? It's hard to fill a cup that's already so full. So when you start working with them at, you know, when they're in school and they're developing their self-esteem, they're developing their passions, you can kind of pour more good into them, pour more good advice into them. Mm -hmm. uh, one that I really love to share is be comfortable with no. Say, yes, t tell me, tell me I can't do it. I'm going to overcome it. Tell me that's not possible. I'll make it possible. Mm -hmm. When you pour those good affirmations into them, whatever it is that they want to set their mind to, whether they want to go into a job, or they want to create a business, they're going to be comfortable with that no because they don't, they, they don't see it as a stopping point. They see it as an obstacle that they can overcome. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When, and while you're doing um, the mentorship that you do, maybe what are some of the challenges that you'd say you encounter on the way while nurturing? I think the biggest challenge is self-esteem. A lot of children think that they can't, mm -hmm. even though we're telling them that they can if mm -hmm. they want. Like, mm -hmm. We're not trying to tell them what to do. We're just trying to give them a way to realize that they can do it. Mm -hmm. And so there's self-esteem, confidence, um, those are the biggest challenges because they may not get support um, in their normal communities mm -hmm. or, you know, home or school or culture or whatever the case might be. And, and it's not that they don't necessarily get support, it's that they don't actually hear the support. I mean, and hear the words that they can do it and, and hear the possibilities that, that, they're, that they have available to them. So that's always the biggest concern because they don't, it's not something that's natural. We don't, adult or child, it's not something that we naturally have. Mm -hmm. it's, it's you, we grow into it and we learn that we can do it. Yeah. Yeah, that's very important to <laughs> you know because most times we have that I'll call it sometimes we call it imposter syndrome where you feel mm -hmm. like oh, I don't really yes. think I belong absolutely you know? would you say those are some of the same challenges that you've gotten to encounter you know while um, on this job absolutely self-esteem and mindset can be difficult obstacles for people to overcome at any age mm. Um, some people that are in their 50s be like, oh, well, I'm in my 50s. I can't, I can't start a business anymore. It's too late for me. Oh, well, I, I'm, I'm in my 20s and my first business idea failed. I guess I'm just a failure and that's just the life I have to accept. No. Mm -hmm. You have to be willing to accept that not everything is going to work out. It's not going to be like in the movies where at the very end there's going to be that big hurrah, hurrah. Um, it's it's going to suck sometimes. Mm -hmm. And you have to be comfortable with that. And when you understand that that's just going to come with whatever it is you want to go into, 
nothing will stop you from there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely nothing. Kenya ni miyangu ya pili. This place is like a second home to me, and I want to make sure that the conversations that we're having with these, with the youth, are going to leave a lasting impact because, you know, there is so much potential mm -hmm. here, and not just Kenya but Africa. There is so much that can be done here. But the biggest obstacle that, again, can be found anywhere all over the world is just that mindset and self-esteem. Mm -hmm. what, what mainly are you looking to instill in these young ones as you move around speaking to them? Yeah, the, again, the biggest thing for me where I come from is that anything is possible. Whether it's wanting to own a business, whether it's wanting to be a manager, whether it's, you know, you know, our family has never gone to college. Maybe that's now an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Just being able to see beyond what they see in their everyday life and know that, and they might not even know what they want to do yet, mm -hmm. but just knowing that there's something else that they could do if they decide what that is, and then knowing how to do that. Just mm -hmm. f the mindset to know that there's possibilities beyond what you can see. But in your heart, you know that there's someplace else or something else or something greater in yourself that that they know that they can accomplish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What mainly are you nurturing them on? You know, is it the business side of it? Is it the talent side of it? Or is it all together? It's, it, it's all together because where their natural talents lie can help them, you know, be, be a good launching point into whatever it is that they want to do. If they're great in communications, mm -hmm. then they might have a business starting in that. If they are really great with people and individuals and kind of like customer service, then they can go into a business like that. But it's just really identifying what it is that they can naturally fall into, that they already naturally love, and encourage that pattern. Encourage them to follow that, that road because as soon as you find you know one branch, mm -hmm. it can split off into so many things. You just have to start at the root of the tree and find out what it is that they are already caring about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the keynote tour, you've just started, it's starting today actually. Yes. Uh, from today to the 7th yes. of October. Probably, this is not the first time you're here. No, this, this is not is the first time you're here. So yeah. um, how, how many times have you been coming and is this something that you keep on doing? Is it yearly? Is it... Yeah, so, so this is our this is our fifth Kenya keynote tour. Mm -hmm. um, the the last uh, the last three, yeah, the, uh, well, including this one. We, this is the in the last two years that we've done the Kenya keynote tour. Mm -hmm. But um, it's something that we try to do every year. We try to bring in different faces, different business owners. Uh, right now, with us on this tour is a whole new group, um, and so we're really excited to see how you know they even walk away with something, um, not just connections, not just mentees, but you know. Of the of the soul mm -hmm. and as much as we love to say that we are trying to change and make an impact here in Kenya honestly at the end of the day we're changed so much more with your smiles and your 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 warm welcome and the way that you are just so able to easily have a conversation with us and being willing to you know spend the time and just understand where we're coming from so we mm -hmm. can help you know more people it, it truly is a, a wonderful experience and I'm always happy to keep coming back here. Mm -hmm. Maybe one would be maybe asking why Kenya? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a good question. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have an answer because they said Kenya and I was like, yay! Because yeah. <laughs> I, I love um, Kenya. But. I, 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 I don't think just why Kenya, but I think the better, the, the better question is why do we keep coming back? And mm. the answer to that is we just love the individuals that we've already built relationships with, not only with the students, but with the schools, the administration, because they're really seeing what it is of an impact that we're making with our students. Mm -hmm. And they want to keep that coming back every single year because we may be talking to the seniors, but then they graduate. So they want us to talk to the juniors that are, that are the next up in line of seniors because they're seeing all the insight, all the advice, all the resources that we're providing is really making an impact. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that, that's the biggest question of you know, why we keep coming back, not just why Kenya. Yeah, all right. Do you have any success stories maybe from the previous visits that you would love to share with us? Um, we have had uh, some um, international programs We've had uh, some students that have actually gotten jobs as uh, virtual assistants. Mm -hmm. So while we're back in America, um, what we do is that we'll kind of delegate to tasks that can be done online. So if it's you know creating images, creating videos, um, we have had um, past business owners that have come on the Kenya keynote tour hire uh, the newly graduated students to uh, have those online positions. So that way, not only are they 
getting real experience with working uh, with, with an American client because that, that, that is what they're doing, mm -hmm. but they're also getting uh, income from that exchange as well. Mm -hmm. So that we're not only just hiring them, but they are actually um, getting Earning a job. Or makes, yeah. All right, what's the end goal? The end goal, to make the biggest impact possible. I mean, it's not just about this week, it's about what mm -hmm. happens after this week and, mm -hmm. and just the years to come and, and how we can, again, mm -hmm. help p guide people into to the future that they don't even have yet, but mm -hmm. they, they can and they will, mm -hmm. and being part of that growth. Mm -hmm. uh, what metrics maybe do you use to measure the success of, of the talent development? The matrix that I use, it honestly varies depending on the student and where they're at. So it, they could be newly graduated, but they might not have any real experience. And so we'll kind of you know, work with them, try to figure out what it is that they can do. Mm -hmm. uh, or we'll have someone who has had you know, a part-time job while they've been working. So they've been getting that, that real hands-on experience while getting the formal education. So the, the matrix that we go by is just where they're at in their and, and their experience in that field that they want to go into. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's how you measure that. Mm. All right, with Top Talent Agency, um, you've had it for a while now, and mm -hmm. you are actually an editor. Um, you have a magazine? <laughs> yes, yeah, uh, on it. it's a editor in chief of, uh, of an online magazine called Top Talent Magazine. Yeah, tell us more about that. So, what I do is that I focus solely, um, pri well, primarily on successful business owners. So, people who have shown results. They have insight and advice. They might have a book. They might have an online course, um, which is another way that a student can inadvertently obtain a mentor now. We're, we're on this tour for a week. We keep coming back. But if we're not able to actually formally connect with them, other ways to get a mentor is finding out what books that they have online, what courses that they have online. Mm. Um, and so people that, I, that come into my uh, field um, that have those things, they, they go into Top Talent Magazine. Mm -hmm. And I work with wonderful people like that, but I also work with other um, media outlets in America. Um, and I have always just had a real passion for conversations and connecting with people. And so that's how I started my business, is just from that. I love doing interviews, I love talking to people and seeing what different routes came up in their life that mm -hmm. got them to where they are. And that's how I started my business. Mm -hmm. And so that's how I took my natural love, I turned it into a talent, and then it converted into a business. Mm -hmm. So I am a real example of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Now um, to you, Ande, you have the Ande Monet LLC. Mm -hmm. If you can just tell us a bit about uh, what you do. With, yeah, with I, I actually have three businesses, but it all revolves around helping businesses when you have a business, you make a lot of mistakes mm -hmm. and, and, and there's a lot of failure involved with owning and running and growing a business. And after I've been doing this for 35 years, there's so many things that small businesses can do to help really grow their, grow their profits and their business without adding any cost or, reven or, cost or working more hours. Mm -hmm. And I try to teach those to people mm -hmm. because there's nothing worse than, than starting a business that you end up failing because of, of things that are really, really small. So I have a mentorship prog program for business owners, but I also do consulting doing the same thing and then a software company, mm -hmm. which again is, is to, to help businesses grow without adding any cost or hours to their day. Yeah. Where did your love for that come from? You know, It was completely by accident, actually. <laughs> I, my original background is in engineering, um, quantum physics mm -hmm. and, and engineering. And very, very long story short, now not to be too geeky, but optimization <laughs> is about, <laughs> is about um, having multiple variables and multiple formulas and solving them all at the same time. And then I take that into business. And so you'll, you want to maximize revenue at the same time that you want to minimize costs at the same time that you want to, you know, maybe not hire somebody or know when to hire them. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, Business is like a, a, an equation for me, and then I can see it better than other people. So it's easy for me to come go into a business, whether it's a $80 billion company or a $1 million company, and say, if you do this, you can double your revenue in 30 to 60 days, literally overnight. Yeah. And so I teach small businesses how to do that so they don't suffer. I mean, to me, it's really, it's really personal with helping small businesses because to me it's like helping them get their children through college, helping them put food on the table, helping them have a life or vacation, helping them get good health care. It's like it's not mm -hmm. the money. Mm -hmm. It's what 
it's much more than the money for me why I do what I do. Yeah, that's inspirational. Now, uh, for you, Isabel, I mean, you've mentioned that you've come to Kenya. This is actually the fifth time um, as you do these tours that you normally do, where you go around inspiring, mm -hmm. you know, the young generation. Where exactly did that love come from for you, your, your side of the story? Where did it all stem from? It's a little bit personal. I haven't really told a lot of people this, but mm. I, um, I, I, I have a learning disability. It's called Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, mm. and I have another one called dyslexia. So two things that make my brain work extra hard than the normal person. Mm. And seeing my, you know, my, my fellow classmates you know, some of them would find things very easy, some things, some things others would find to be very difficult. And I just always saw how, you know, in the back of my mind, the different ways that their self-esteem would get nicked at if they weren't the best at everything. Mm. It's impossible to be. It's hard. And that's always kind of stuck with me. So when I'm having these conversations with students, when I'm speaking to them, I'm honestly talking to myself again. Mm. It's like, it's okay to have these challenges. Just don't give up. It's okay to have someone in your corner being like, honestly, I don't think you're going to make it. It's okay to cut ties and form new relationships with people who want you to succeed. Because it's going to be hard no matter what. You can either not follow your dreams and be surrounded by people who don't want you to succeed, or you can say goodbye to some of those relationships and move towards your vision. Either way, you're going to have some hard decisions to make. Mm -hmm. You just have to choose which level of difficulty you want to sit with for a really long time. They say pick your struggle. Pick your struggle, yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right, as we come to a close of this conversation, probably uh, within the seven days that you will be around, that's one week, mm -hmm. where exactly will you be going um, specifically, maybe? Um, so, so we are going to be speaking to a lot of different schools here in Nairobi, mm -hmm. uh, Kisi, Kisumu, uh, and some universities in the Masai Mara. Mm -hmm. um, but if you, if you guys just follow us on um, social media, uh, you'll, you'll see where we're at. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we, we try not to let everyone know where we are, because sometimes people who aren't the students will try to come in. So oh, we try okay, to be accommodating okay, to the okay, okay. To locations that we're at. Yeah, because you want to limit it to the students that yes. you are working with yes. right now. Yeah. All right, maybe a piece of advice as we finish. Oh, you grow in your uncomfortable zone, which is really hard when you don't like being uncomfortable, whether you're a student or an adult. You know, mm -hmm. pushing yourself in that area that doesn't feel right is, and changing the mm -hmm. mindset to know that when you feel uncomfortable, you're growing makes mm -hmm. a big difference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Before you give us your last remarks, you know, I've seen you come with a very huge team. Mm -hmm. So probably each, each, each person that you've come with has something to, will be speaking to their kids maybe? Yes. Are they business owners? Are they? Yes. So every single person that's going to be um, on the stage and talking to the students all own their own successful businesses. Okay. They've been doing it for uh, various amounts of time. They have high success in what it is that they try to accomplish uh, for their clients. Mm. So every single person that you're going to see on stage, they're going to have a different message. They're going to tell different personal stories because, again, we all come from different walks of life. We all have different situations that brought us to where we are today. And my, and my only piece of advice to, to give to anybody is never judge a book by its cover mm -hmm. because you don't know what's in those chapters. You don't know what's in those pages. Mm -hmm. All right. Maybe your last remarks? Uh, yeah, my, my, I guess my last remarks are whatever challenge that you have coming up, embrace it. No matter the outcome, no matter how much of a struggle it's going to be, if you have to get up early, if you're going to have an uncomfortable conversation, do it. Power through it. Because at the end of that, on the other side of it, it's going to be the success that you want to have. So mm -hmm. face it head on. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, um, Ande Monet, and thank you so much, Isabella Donadio, for the job that you're doing. You're doing a wonderful job just trying to nurture these young kids. And as we've uh, agreed, you know, from this conversation, that starting from the time when they are young is the best way to start. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you've learned a bit of Swahili. So yeah. in Swahili, we say, Samaki um, Mkunje Angali Mdogo, like you nurture from the word go, like, I, I don't know how to translate that clearly, but... <laughs>
<laughs> but, yeah, but it just means that you start from a young age and that's the best time to try and mm -hmm. just mold someone yeah. to become who they want to become because when mm -hmm. they're Older, maybe it wouldn't be possible to mold them as much. It's, but it, when, it, it's harder when you're older, yeah. but it's not impossible. Yeah. It's best to start when you're younger, so you can have those trials and failures and overcome them. But it doesn't matter how, how old you get in life. It's never too late. It's never impossible. It's just going to be a little bit harder. Exactly. All right. And on that note, that is where we end, we end Good Morning Kenya for today. Thank you so much, ladies, for joining us today. It was a pleasure Thank having you. you on the show. This is where we say goodbye right here from the entire team that made this uh, program a success today. We want to wish you a lovely day. Do enjoy the rest of your viewing. See you tomorrow, same time and place, God willing. Goodbye.